Welcome to the EANTC Multi-Vendor Interoperability Event 2020. Here in Paris, that's what I would usually say. But this year, nothing is usual, so we're not in Paris, we're not at the showcase at the wonderful Upper Side MPLS SDN and NFE World Congress. I'm actually here in our very empty office, wrapping up the white paper and all of the documentation. And so since we cannot showcase the results quickly and early this year, we have decided to actually shoot a couple of videos in advance during the hot staging, which we finalized, fortunately, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, a lot of the vendors participated and showed live guided tour demonstrations already during this time. So it's my pleasure to introduce you to this short series of videos uh, from the participants. And, uh, but before I go there, let me just introduce you to what we did this year. So in total, we had 16 participating vendors, um, vendors that have participated many times, first comers, um, newcomers, uh, very interesting vendors in the white box and open source sector, test tool vendors, of course, which supported us extensively again this year, uh, big router vendors, small router vendors, edge equipment vendors, and of course, the clocking section supporters, which have tested with us for more than 10 years already, and are again showcasing some advances in clocking, but we will see those in other videos in the coming days. If you look actually at the list of the participating devices, you will see there are many devices and quite a number of vendors use this opportunity to test and for interoperability different product groups. So um, their core, their data center, their edge equipment, and uh, a couple of vendors brought a whole portfolio of equipment. So our lab was well filled with uh, 12 racks of equipment, again, as in previous years. We did focus on uh, uh, the main topics, EVPN, segment routing, SDN orchestration. So this really took the bulk of all the uh, test coverage and kept us busy for the two weeks of testing, which we had done in addition to um, six months of preparation, uh, test planning, coordination with the participants and so on. In addition, we focused on uh, precision time protocol clocking tests and uh, a new topic that we included, uh, flexible ethernet, which is a physical layer protocol for the edge, specifically suited for 5G slicing. So if you look at the topology, you can see different areas. So the blue area in the top right is the segment routing area in the white area, MPLS based. Uh, the light blue one below is the SRV6, segment routing over IPv6 area, which has grown substantially this year with a new vendor participating. And uh, the green area is actually the data center area, VXLAN based segment routing. So you can see there was a ton of interest in this area as well. And finally, the yellow area on top left is the MPLS uh, legacy area, which we use for specifically for interoperability testing of the migration scenarios. Because almost all of the service providers out there still have MPLS networks, they need to migrate and they need to integrate these existing legacy networks. In the bottom, the light green area is the edge and clocking section, which supported all of the clocking text tests with Grandmaster and other devices. So that said, I want to keep it short and I would like to hand over for the first of the demos to um, our friends uh, Christoph Sarkovic from Juniper and Aditya Ramadogan from Arcus, who are going to introduce the topic of SRV6, uh, traffic engineering and topology independent loop free alternative, TILFA. Uh, quite a mouthful, but a very important protocol for redundancy and high availability in uh, segment routing. So over to you guys. Hi, hello. My name is Krzysztof Szarkowicz from Juniper Networks. I would like to present uh, a report from uh, interoperability testing for uh, SRV6. We have tested uh, a couple of things and a couple of companies were included here, like Arcus, Cisco, Huawei, Ixia and Juniper. And uh, all these companies were included in different roles in the tests. So what we have uh, tested or the purpose of the test is actually verify layer-free VPN operation over SRV6. We have tested only SEED and DT4, which means that layer-free VPN V4 was tested between a couple of uh, vendors. Then we have tested as well the segment routing traffic engineering using SRV6 uh, architecture. And here we used the uh, NZINT function and PSP, penultimate segment popping function. And uh, we as well verify application of this SRV6 traffic engineering 
to build the, the topology independent LFA backup path. And to build topology independent LFA backup path, there are a couple of roles in, included uh, in, in LFA, so PLR, point of local repair. So this is the router that is performing the calculation of the backup path. And as well, PSP functions, so penultimate segment popping function. This is the router that actually removes the uh, S, uh, segment routing header from the packet. And uh, let's, uh, let's discuss segment routing T. So segment routing T will be presented uh, by the engineer from Arcus. Uh, hi guys, my name is Aditya. I'm a customer engineer from Arcus. Uh, so in this topology, we'll just quickly look at uh, the segment routing traffic engineering and how the topology is laid out. So we have different vendors performing different functions. So we have the Huawei 77 and XCI 128 doing the PE functionalities. Uh, which are doing the BGP VPN V4 with the SRV6 extensions. And Juniper 102, Juniper 92, Arcus 25, and Cisco 40 are forming the IPv6 core running ISIS as the link state routing protocol with XRV6 extensions enabled. Amongst these four, um, Arcus 25 and Juniper 102 are configured with SRV6, so they perform specific SRV6 network functions. We'll come to those network functions in the next slides, but at a high level, What's happening here is from a control plane point of view, uh, Huawei is advertising the BGP VPN v4 routes to Ixia. And um, the, it's a standard VPN format, but there's an extended community, which is an SRV6 end DT4 SID that gets advertised. So it's a downstream assigned end SID. Uh, now when Ixia receives that packet, uh, the control plane message, what it's gonna do is it's gonna create a packet uh, with the next hop, uh, as the end DT4 uh, address in the destination address of the IPv6 header. So now, uh, without using SRV6 T, the packet would flow um, using the SPF in the underlay, but we want to do things a little bit differently and do traffic engineering. So what we do in this case is the Huawei is also advertising a color community along with the VPN V4 route. So, and the XCI 128 is already configured with an SRV, SRV60 policy, which says if I receive this community, uh, steer the packet in an SRV6 tunnel, which goes via this path, Arcus 25, and then Juniper 102. So as you can see on the right-hand side, that's the exact packet that XCI is gonna craft. We'll look a little bit deeper on the packet to see what's being uh, pushed. So uh, as you can see, the innermost purple header is the IPv4 header. And uh, that packet is pushed in an IPv6 header with uh, SRH, uh, uh, segment routing extension header. And there are three different segments, as you can see on the packet. The, the, the topmost segment, the active segment is segment two, which is Arcus's end SID. And the next active segment is going to be Juniper's end SID. And the next segment is going to be Huawei's end DT4 SID. So now this is the packet that's being sent to Juniper 92. Uh, so now when we go to the next slide, so from Juniper's point of view, this IPv6 address has no uh, significance in terms of an NSID functionality. So it's just gonna perform an IPv6 route lookup in the IPv6 rib, and according to its shortest path, uh, it's gonna forward it to the Arcus box. So now when Arcus receives this packet, it matches the NSID configured on the Arcus box. So it's gonna perform a specific functionality, which is the NSID. So now since the segments left is two, the first action that happens on this packet is the SL is decremented by one. So the segments left is going to be decremented to one. And then the next action that's going to happen is the pointer uh, to the destination IP address is updated. So what I mean by that is it's going to take the segment one, the value in the segment one, it's going to update into the destination IP address field. So now once this new packet is constructed, the hop limit is decremented and all of that, um, an IPv6 uh, route lookup is being performed. And based on the SPF, the next hop address is directly reachable via the Cisco 40, according to the SPF. So now the packet is being sent to the Cisco 40 box. So now, as we can see on the next slide, uh, Cisco 40, again, it doesn't perform any NSID functionality. It, it just looks at it as an IPv6 header. So it performs a route lookup in the IPv6 routing table and then forwards the packet to Juniper 102. And when Juniper receives a packet, it also performs a specific NSID functionality. So as you can see on the right-hand side, the header has been shortened. So what we mean by that is when Juniper receives the packet, it's gonna perform a specific functionality. The first thing that it does is it's gonna decrement the segments left by one. So the segments uh, remaining are gonna become zero. 
And if configured with PSP, which is penultimate segment popping, and in this case, Juniper is configured with PSP, it will strip the SRH header and update the destination IP address with the innermost uh, segment ID, which is Huawei's end DT4 SID. It's going to construct that new packet and forward it out to Huawei. So now when Huawei receives the packet, it's going to know that it matches the uh, NDT4 SID on the Huawei. So it's going to do a route lookup in the IPv4 VRF table and then forward the packet to the CE. So on a whole, as you can see end to end, rather than just letting the packet go uh, along the SPF, we have performed a traffic steering using SRV60 and uh, colored communities. All right, thank you very much. Let's continue further our discussion. So how can we use this uh, SRT capability not only to steer the traffic across the network, but as well to create a backup path? So one of the application of uh, SRV6 SRT is to create the backup path. So here's an example, the same, the same topology. Uh, the traffic now is going from the left side to the right side, so opposite direction that in the previous example. And uh, again, so shortest path to the destination is going over Juniper 102 and Juniper 92. So we would like to protect the traffic against the link failure between Juniper 102 and Juniper, uh, Juniper 92. So our first uh, step to find the backup path is actually to calculate so-called P space and Q space. So what is the P space? So P space is the um, set of the rotors that uh, the PLR, PLR, which is the point of local repair. So as you see here, PLR is Juniper 102 because this is directly connected uh, rotor to the failure domain. So set of uh, rotors that can be reached without crossing the failed links or the links that you'd like to protect. So in this example, from Juniper 102, only Cisco 40 can be reached without crossing this failed link. Uh, Arcus 25 cannot be reached because uh, to reach Arcus 25, you know there is ECMP, one leg of ECMP is going over Juniper 92, another leg of uh, ECMP is going over Juniper 40. So this is our P set, P space. Then in order to calculate the find the backup, we are looking for something that we call Q space. So Q space is set of rotors that can reach the destination of the link. So in that case, can reach, we can reach Juniper 92 uh, without crossing the failed link. So again, the same situation. We can reach Juniper 92 from Arcus 25, but we cannot reach Juniper 92 from Cisco 40. Why not? Because again, we have ECMP case here. So one leg of the ECMP is going over Juniper 102 and over this failed link and over ECMP leg is going over Arcus 25. So we don't have uh, overlapping P space and Q space, which means uh, we don't have uh, so-called PQ node. Why we are looking for that? Because if you find PQ node, then we can redirect the traffic to this PQ node with additional label, additional segment. And then from this PQ node, we can redirect traffic to the rest of the network. So we don't have here that. that that's the problem. Fortunately, there's something that is called as well enhanced P space. Okay, enhanced P space. What is enhanced P space? Actually, enhanced P space is something similar to the P space, but from the point of view of the neighbors of the PLR. So here, the neighbor of the PLR is Cisco 40. This is directly connected neighbor of PLR. So from Cisco 40, we can actually reach uh, Arcus 25 without uh, crossing the file link. So which means that our PQ node, including enhanced P space, is Arcus 25. So what does it mean? It means we can redirect the traffic to Arcus 25 using seed advertised by Arcus 25. Because if we just simply redirect the traffic to Arcus 25, Cisco might turn this traffic back. So we need to put some seed. So we are putting some seed, which is end seed advertised by Arcus 25. And when this uh, packet arrives here to Arcus 25, Arcus 25 performs the PSP function that was discuss discussed just before, removes these seeds, so remove this segment routing extension header, and send the traffic to Juniper 92 and to XI128 without extension header. As you see here on the slides as well, uh, Juniper 102 is preparing for this event that the link goes down, that there the, the will be link failure, and is uh, preparing two next hops in the forwarding information base, in the forwarding table. You see some next hop with the weight 01, and you see some next hop with the weight 0F something. 
So in junior hypercase, in junior implementation, the lower next hop with the lower weight is the primary next hop, and the next hop with the higher weight is the backup next stop. So as you see here, the primary next stop is directly linked to GNUMER 92. So this interface X010 is basically directly linked to GNUMER 92. If this direct link goes down, so there's a failure on this direct link, this primary next stop is uh, removed from the forwarding table without any global IGP convergence. So it's simply based on the uh, fact that the link goes down. And the secondary next stop, the 0F000 next stop, will be used. And as you see here, this next one has some special here notation. So it goes over, over a segment rotting tunnel. So you see here a SRV6 tunnel. And the segment this we are pushing is FD010251. What is this FD010251? This is actually the end seed advertised by Arcus25. So what happens when the, when the primary link fails, then Juniper uh, 102 inserts this uh, segment routing extension header to the packet. Okay, replaces the destination, original destination address of the packet that Juniper received from Huawei was the destination X, uh, advertised by Ixia 128. Okay, that was original destination. Now we are doing here some tricks. We are replacing this destination IP address with the end seat advertised by uh, Arcus 25. You see here, this is new destination IP address. And we insert one segment into, so we insert segment routing header with one segment. And this one segment is the final destination of Ixia. So 128, 128, this is the end seed and, and the DT4 seed advertised by Ixia. So basically traffic packet is redirected over Cisco. As discussed previously, discussing SRT case, Cisco is doing simple IPv6 forwarding here. So it's not uh, touching a uh, header, segment routing header. When packet arrives to Arcus 25, segment routing header is popped because this was advertised with PSP function, so the uh, penultimate segment pop. So this header is removed, final destination address is copied to the destination address, and packet is forwarded to Ixia. All right, so I have, I have a couple of uh, show commands that I can show on the on the Juniper, how does it look like in more details? Let me quickly switch the screen. So basically, as you hear, this is the show, uh, show rod for the end uh, DT4 seed uh, advertised by, by Ixia. And you see here we have uh, two uh, next hops. One next hop uh, over interface 010, which is the direct next hop to the Juniper 92, which is containerized RPD. And another next hop is going over interface to Cisco. And the second next hop, you see here, there's some uh, magic SRV6 standard here. When I go for more extensive uh, view, so abbreviated version of more extensive view was uh, shown previously on the slides. So you see the next hop, direct next hop is just IPv6 next stop, and this backup next hop is 0F00 is next hop over uh, segment routing tunnel. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for presenting, Christoph and Aditya. It has been a pleasure. So I sincerely hope that we will see all of you live at the MPLS SDN World Congress in Paris, which has been rescheduled to the last week of June, the first week of July. And uh, until then, stay healthy and please continue watching our videos in the coming days with seven more demonstrations coming. Thank you very much. <laughs>